You know, Hank Green, there's no way you or anyone really could exist on the internet for any significant amount of time without knowing the Vlogbrothers or Crash Course or SciShow or at least one of his many, many business ventures. He's generally loved, and while I think he's okay, he's no PewDiePie or Ali A as YouTubers go, I do think that he has some questionable feelings on the world, some of which I'll go into here. First off, both John and Hank Green are basically neoliberals, as their charity work with Bill Gates demonstrates. They seek to improve the lives of people within capitalism, but don't seem to really grasp that maybe capitalism is the cause of the problems they're crowdsourcing in order to fix. The Project for Awesome does a lot of genuine good in the world, I'm not going to bother to shit talk it to any extent. However, it does strike me as interesting that they're extremely proud of all the charity work they do for desperate people in the third world, despite the fact that their individual net worths are frankly astronomical. John Green is pretty objectionable for a couple of ways, and like everyone else these days, he has his own Your Favours Problematic page, and yeah, the whole thing in his book where the kids start making out in Anne Frank's house is weird as fuck, but he seems pretty disconnected from the real world, to be honest. He's a best-selling author, a couple of his books have been made into movies, and basically he's just not the most down-to-earth person in the world nowadays. Hank Green, on the other hand, whilst he's still incredibly rich, is more interesting to me, because he demonstrates a new breed of YouTube ethical capitalist, or perhaps more accurately what Slavoj Žižek describes as liberal communists, and I thought his worldview would be interesting to dissect. According to liberal communist ethics, the ruthless pursuit of profit is counteracted by charity. Charity is part of the game, a humanitarian mask hiding the underlying economic exploitation. Developed countries are constantly helping undeveloped ones with aid, credits, etc., and so avoid the key issue. Their complicity in and responsibility for the miserable situation situation of the third world. As for the opposition between smart and non-smart, outsourcing is the key notion. You export the necessary dark side of production, disciplined, hierarchical labour, ecological pollution to non-smart third world locations or invisible ones in the first world. The ultimate liberal communist dream is to export the entire working class to invisible third world sweatshops. Green's opinions on capitalism as a concept is rather confused. He seems to be of the opinion that we need to improve society and that wealth inequality is inherent a negative thing. In fact, on the surface, both of the Vlogbrothers seem to support a number of left-leaning ideas, like universal healthcare. The fact that such an obvious concept can be described as left-leaning rather than the norm says a lot about politics, both in the US and UK, where the Conservative government is constantly attempting to undermine the NHS. Uh, as a side note, I actually wrote that bit under the impression that it was true, but I've since looked it up and it's not true. It's also accurate to say that it would cost hundreds of thousands of jobs, and many of them would be good-paying jobs, from medical device salespeople to insurance adjusters to marketing managers. They can't even commit to supporting universal health care because of jobs, Jesus fucking Christ, opposing private prisons and poverty, etc. However, like most neoliberals and centrists, completely misses the seemingly obvious fact that the reason that these problems exist, the reason we have private prisons and health care, the reason that poverty is unable to exist in the first place is because of capitalism. The reason that the Green Brothers' charity efforts, much of which does a lot of good, is even necessary is because of an economic system from which they benefit. If we had global communism rather than global capitalism, does anyone seriously believe that a billion people would still be malnourished and struggling for clean drinking water? Probably the most illuminating illustration of this is Green's rare discussion of politics on Twitter. Like, take a look at this shit. Seriously, Green actually took the time to type this out and thought that it was a valid point, and clearly still does because it's still up on his profile, he didn't delete it. This is a screenshot, not something I had to pull out of the Wayback Machine or anything. So just to make it absolutely clear, Hank Green believes that his time in business has demonstrated to him that the capitalist system is not broken or corrupt, but merely that the individual people who run businesses are the broken, fucked up ones. How very... Randian. There are a number of responses one could make to this. In fact, let me just take a couple minutes to do just that. First, we could point out that if a system rewards selfish and abusive behaviour, and thus literal psychopaths, or on a less extreme level just selfish, vindictive people, and encourages them to gain positions of extreme power over others, maybe that's a problem with the system, rather than just the people who benefit from it. Secondly, as anyone on the left can attest, this argument that Green uses to defend capitalism is often used to push the narrative that socialism could never win because bad actors will take advantage 
advantage of the system for their own personal gain to the detriment of others, so I'm afraid I must turn around and apply it back to itself. Capitalism is a nice idea in theory, but in practice human nature is just inherently selfish, so it could never work. Don't get me wrong, I don't agree with the human nature anti-socialism stuff, in fact I think that people are inherently collaborative. That is after all how societies come to function in the first place, but if you're going to attempt to defend capitalism against the left using a tactic often used against the left on a semi-regular basis, you're gonna have to expect it to be turned back on you. And finally, of course, this is nothing more than confirmation bias. Hank Green believes himself to be an ethical businessman, and as a capitalist, if he acknowledges that capitalism is the problem with society, he necessarily also has to admit that he is a part of that problem, and that's not an easy thing to do at the best of times. Not to mention that a number of his prior colleagues who also benefited not just from the system, but from him, turned out to be fucking monsters. I'll probably do a whole thing about the DFTBA records controversy at some point, because I wrote a whole thing about it here, but I took it out because it ultimately distracted from the overall point. Suffice to say, Green has been burned by his colleagues in the not-too-distant past, and this may very well be his basis for the worst selves comment. And it has to be difficult to reconcile that with the fact that not only do you move in the same circles, but that you benefit from the same system. Alex Day is still really popular, and according to the internet, has a net worth of $5 million, and a successful recent book despite everything he did. I kind of sympathise with him here, but he persists with this flawed line of reasoning. He then of course had a civil discussion with famed turf Lacey Green. I cannot describe in words the extent to which I do not want to talk about Lacey Green, so her tweet has been cut out of the screenshot. All you need to know for context is that it was critical of his take. Anyway, one of the main responses he had to this was, well, this, which is quite simply incorrect. The final tweet I want to discuss is this one, where he sets up a straw man in order to make the accusation that literally anyone believes that ending capitalism will solve literally any problem ever, which I'm sure those people do exist, but I've never met any. Obviously, the first thought that came to mind when I first saw this was, it's very reminiscent of Donald Trump's both sides rhetoric. You have, uh, you, you had a group on one side that was bad, and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. And nobody wants to say that, but I'll say it right now. Which surprised me, because I never saw Hank as someone who could ever be seriously compared to Trump, but here we are, I guess. At this point seems to be a disingenuous attempt to discredit the left as a bunch of delusional idiots who think that achieving one of their goals means that no problems can ever exist ever, whilst also attacking, I guess, ANCAPs? I suppose it's pretty standard centrist rhetoric at this point, but the problem here is that we currently live under a global capitalist system, and pointing out that it's not working out so well is not the same thing as ignoring that things are going badly and insisting that we just need more of the current non-functional system. Also, nice job demonising people with mental illnesses there, Hank, you shithouse. So, now we have a semi-solid idea of the way Hank feels about capitalism. We've reached a point in the video where I have to actually talk about the thing that inspired me to talk about this in the first place. Hank Green recently released a series of two videos, which I want to discuss, mostly dealing with his own personal feelings of guilt over finding himself in a position of relative privilege, both from his family and from his business ventures as an adult, and I think it perfectly encapsulates the contradictions in his worldview, so let's dive in. We start out with a little story in which a feudal lord accuses his serf of picking some flowers, to which the serf responds that he believed they were weeds, and then the feudal lord explains the significance of the flowers and we set the stage for the topic of the video, guilt. Essentially, Hank was given certain privileges that most people do not. Looking at the American student loan system from the outside is particularly weird, incidentally, because in the UK we don't have to pay ours back until we earn enough that it might make sense. So if you're earning enough to be paying anything towards your student loans, you're already doing relatively well for yourself, and that makes him feel guilty. One is forced to ask, if he really felt so bad that he had this huge advantage over his peers, why has he never done anything to oppose students? student loans? Why has he not made any videos calling for the abolition of student loans as a concept? The closest he's come, as far as I'm aware, is this one video from 2015 where he makes the point that student loans are a good deal, as people with degrees on average earn more than those without, but that universities should be spending their funding on more academic-based things rather than stuff that looks good on prospectuses. He actually does mention that a large contributing factor towards this is the capitalist system in which we live, but stops short of actually criticising said system. What's driving this is, in a word, sales. Colleges are acting more like businesses and treating students more like customers. Schools compete with each other, and in a world where the costs are really high anyway, it starts to look a little fuzzy when a student's deciding between $310 payments for 10 years and $340 payments. That's only 30 bucks a month! And if one school has really nice dorms, a well-supported tutoring program, nice athletic fields, a super dope climbing wall, a celebrity-level professor, cushy mattresses, and local organic produce at the cafeteria salad bar, then both the parents, who are probably footing a big hunk of the bill, 
Bill and prospective students are likely to choose the more expensive option. Some of those things are worthwhile. Others don't have much use beyond, like, looking pretty cool on prospective student weekend. Instead opting for a sort of, it's great value for money, but if only there was some alternative to a system in which large for-profit organizations strive to sell products, rather than provide a great service and work for the betterment of greater society. The absolutely nutso thing about all of this is that it still works, because even at these juicily inflated prices, college is still a good deal. Money spent on a bachelor's, associate's, or professional degree yields a higher return than the stock market. Even dropping out of college after 18 months has a higher yield than the stock market, though not as high as graduating. So in a way, colleges are just working their way up to costing as much as the value they provide. But I think that we can all safely agree that college should not be about maximizing revenue, especially for state schools. The question isn't really whether college is a good deal, it's whether college could be a better deal. It seems a little like the increase in spending is kind of a natural outgrowth of a capitalist society and people making decisions that benefit them, at least in the short term. But it's worth asking if treating America's students like customers is in the end going to be a disservice to everyone. Maybe we shouldn't be selling students an experience. Maybe we should be providing them with as much enrichment and, dare I say it, education as possible. Anyway, getting back to the original video, Hank complains about his own feelings of guilt and that he feels guilty for something he didn't do and that he used to deal with these feelings badly by either not thinking about it and surrounding yourself with equally privileged people or giving in to the meritocracy argument that I made a video about previously, or finally the correct answer, which is to feel guilty of the unearned advantages in life. He then talks about the way that psychologists often talk about guilt in a positive way to discourage immoral or unacceptable behaviour in a society. I'm not going to go into the fact that this interpretation implies that capitulating to the society's whims is always a positive thing, which I would argue it isn't. Like, I'm sure abolitionists in the 19th century were made to feel guilty about the way their public actions reflected on their families, but that doesn't mean they were wrong, and eventually comes to the conclusion that it is the correct response to feel guilty over unearned wealth. The conclusion to this video is interesting, because he concludes that in order to process this guilt, we must instead put those advantages to good use. The answer is, I think, yes. Because no, you don't deserve the guilt in the same way you don't deserve the money. And I don't deserve ulcerative colitis or a healthy child or beautiful fall days or really funny internet memes. I don't deserve my guilt and I don't deserve the advantages I've been given because deserving is the wrong frame. I have that stuff and the question isn't what did I do to deserve it, it's what do I do with it? Do I take my guilt and let it weigh me down and terrify me and prevent me from ever feeling good? Or do I take my guilt and let it encourage me to do good the stuff with the advantages I've been given? Wasting energy feeling ashamed of something you didn't do? No. Recognizing the advantages you have and being motivated to use them to help people who weren't so lucky? Yeah. And once again, we are back to the liberal communist ideal. Hank feels guilty about being wealthy, but he's not going to give up being wealthy. So instead he uses his implied charitable work and entertainment value of his videos as a kind of, yeah, but I'm doing good. When, let's be honest here, he's never going to make an anti-capitalist or pro-socialist video or turn his businesses into co-ops or really do anything to actually affect or impact society in such a way as to eradicate the possibility of unearned privilege and wealth. It's so frustrating because it's like he's on the cusp of realising and acknowledging that it's the system that's at fault and then it just kind of ends. So obviously after that I was desperate to find out what happened next, and after a few days John Green made a video on Vlogbrothers, and I was honestly fascinated to see how the less introspective Green Brother would respond to this question. Let's give it a watch. And also because time spent trying to do or make something beautiful never feels wasted to me. In a related story I will be back playing video games as a pacifist in the near future over at Hank Games, but before that Hank, I will see you on Monday. Okay, so it's mostly about exploration and other unrelated topics, including trying to get an audience of mostly younger people to buy Vlogbrothers merch, but there's this interesting little snippet at the end. Oh, wait, my mistake. He doesn't mention it once. Fuck's sake. Okay, fine. What about Hank's personal channel? Aha! Result. Hank made a follow-up video. Let's watch and see what he has to say. It's titled, Should I Be Guilty or Grateful? Which isn't encouraging, but we'll see. Right, so apparently Hank got some pushback from people saying that he shouldn't feel guilty for his unarmed privilege, but grateful that he was able to have these advantages. He was obviously unhappy about these comments because this video is essentially a response to that argument, which is admittedly really shitty, not gonna lie. But he does specifically say that he's not ashamed of his wealth, but that the fact he's benefiting from injustice. The problem is, of course, that he does not actually do anything with his wealth 
well to change that. As a wealthy guy, he could do a lot more than he currently does to combat this inequality. Guilt is fine, in fact, it's probably the correct response, but as he himself said in the original video, the purpose of guilt is to push us to do better, and I don't think he does that as much as he realistically could. And that's rather sad, really. It means he'll perpetually feel guilty over something that will never really be resolved until he realises the extent to which he could do more. The video ends with a kind of ironic double standard. And I'm, I was just so surprised by this, that it kept coming up over and over again. I was like, why is this bad take? Like, why is this n sort of nonsensical argument showing up over and over again? And ultimately, it's because it sounds nice. It's like, oh, whoa, 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 okay, I can discard my fear about being on the wrong side of the inequality curve by just saying, oh, well, the people who I love and respect and should love and respect worked hard to give that for me, so I should honor them by perpetuating injustice? I don't think that's the people who, who I, what the people who I am grateful to would want me to do. And maybe that's different for you. But if this is something that like appeals uh, or that, that has come up and you've been like, okay, yeah, uh, to some extent, I think that might just be like giving us an excuse to not worry about it. Cause let me put it this way. If you're saying instead of feeling guilty, feel grateful, let me rephrase that. Instead of feeling like you should recognize injustice and act in accordance with that, feel thankful to the people who have loved you. Does it sound like those things have anything to do with each other? He gets mad at these commenters for wanting to assuage their guilt by shifting their feelings of guilt over benefiting from equality by twisting it to form this I should be grateful instead argument which stops them having to do anything but doesn't seem to realise that in the same way he could be criticised for feeling guilt but still not doing enough to attempt to rectify or eradicate this inequality. He accuses these commenters of perpetuating injustice but by supporting capitalism and not doing everything he can to push more left-leaning ideals he could also be criticised for perpetuating injustice. Almost done with his video. Videos, I promise. After that video, the Vlogbrothers videos sort of just continued as normal. Hank made one when he tries to flog his old YouTube game show as a pub quiz. John made a video where he discusses the financial situation of the nerdfighter community, including all of their YouTube and some of their merch sales going to charity, which is nice, but then he drops this bombshell and actively admits that barely any of his and Hank's personal wealth is actually doing much here. I want to emphasize that it is far more generous for a person with ten dollars to donate one dollar to a cause they care about than for a person with a million dollars to donate a hundred thousand dollars to a cause they care about. It's really easy for rich people to seem altruistic and we're making this transition because we can afford to. Okay, back to the video. Like, he mentions that 50k they already have is being donated. Right, so Nerdfighteria has a charity called the Foundation to Decrease World Suck which, despite its silly name, is a real charity devoted to trying to decrease the overall level of suck in the world. And the Foundation raises money all year long in anticipation of our big annual charity event, the Project for Awesome. This year, the Foundation has about $50,000 in the bank going into the P4A. Some of this came from Amazon Smile, some from People's Workplace Giving programs, a bunch came from Tab for a Cause, which lets you raise money for charity while you browse the web. And also, half of the revenue from this YouTube channel goes to the Foundation, so thank you for watching ads and and or subscribing to whatever YouTube Red is currently called. But both of the Green Brothers are multi-millionaires. No one seems to really question this, though. The Project for Awesome has raised seven million for charities since 2012. Since 2012, the Project for Awesome has raised over seven and a half million dollars for charities, supporting causes from cancer research to clean water initiatives. John Green's personal wealth is 17 million dollars. John Green could give less than half of that away tomorrow and do a lot more good for the world than his charities have in five years, without him noticing too much of a change in his lifestyle, if any. And as such, we're forced to ask why? Why did these two brothers, both of whom could contribute so much money in a day that it would dwarf the work their charity has done over the past half decade, push for others to donate, buy merch for which the profits go to charity, etc.? The answer, I think, is simple. As the liberal communists of Zizek's imagining, they want to have their cake and eat it, to be both unbelievably wealthy and be seen as altruists of the highest order without even a slight change in lifestyle. To criticise the system that causes inequality, but not directly, and not in such a way that it might actually come across as supporting any opposing system. Anyway, the point is that this idea, the idea of guilt and how one should feel with learning that they live in relative privilege, and how they can work to make the best of that situation, never comes up again. Hank raised the question, gave an incredibly shallow answer, and then just moved on, and left it sitting there, unanswered, at least to my satisfaction. Your mileage may vary.
I'm not a paranoid person or conspiracy-minded at all, but quite frankly this seems to me like Hank Green brought up a topic that caused him to have a pretty severe existential crisis and clearly upsets him a lot, but he cannot allow himself to indulge in real, serious self-reflection on this matter, because his entire worldview is based around the premise that the answer to our current situation, as far as climate change, poverty, etc. is concerned, is capitalism, but more ethical, and the idea that capitalism is inherently unethical is anathema to him. He just cannot accept that, and that's really quite sad. I don't hate Hank or John Green, I really like a lot of their content, especially the terrible DFTBA rap. But they're at least in my mind emblematic of this idea of the ethical capitalist or the liberal communist, and that needs to be acknowledged. We should also bear in mind to what extent the object, what I called objective violence, violence caused by the functioning of today's global system itself, is in a false way counteracted by not subjective violence but subjective, how should I put it, charity, charity activities. Which is why, for me, I, if Bill Gates is an icon today, not so much because you know, virtual capitalism, uh, Microsoft, but how he combines the most ruthless abstract capitalism, you grab billions of dollars with this hard bleeding, warm tolerance. At the most, if I were to pick the most disgusting photo of the last couple of years, it is in New York Times about a couple of months ago when Bill Gates visited India, him and his wife in an Indian village embracing uh, uh, some in a hospital ill children. You should have seen that pathetic expression and so on. In other words, I claim that it's not enough today to say, oh, but people are starving, we should help them. It's part of today's system to refer all the time to this threatened outside. 